Have we all calmed down yet? It's been a few days since the manic transfer window, which has left us with just a handful of seats that are yet to be confirmed going into 2022. It was all triggered by a driver move that we all expected, as Mercedes have promoted George Russell following three seasons with Williams. But who are the winners and losers from 2021's silly season? Let's have a look. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. In this video, I'll pick my three winners and three losers from the 2021 silly season. There will be others, but I've opted for my top three of each. These could of course change with the final Alfa Romeo seat, as well as the confirmation of the Haas drivers still to be confirmed at the time of recording. But here's my view from all the chaos that happened last week. And as always, please make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video, and subscribe if you're new. The winners, George Russell. Let's start off with the most obvious, shall we? George Russell is a clear winner from this driver transfer silly season. The 2018 Formula 2 champion has been preparing for his Mercedes seat ever since he joined the Williams team in 2019. Since then, over his two and a half seasons with them, he's beaten his teammate in every single qualifying session. And around this time, each and every year, there have been plenty of rumours going around that he could be promoted into Valtteri Bottas' seat. And this year, it happened, and it was as if it was all planned by Mercedes and Toto Wolff as Russell went to the Williams team with a three-year deal, and as such, they have stuck by their contracts as the Silver Arrows like to do. This year is where we've seen Russell really come into his own. The so-called Mr. Saturday has gotten even better during qualifying sessions with a handful of Q3 appearances in his Williams, but he's also improved in the races, where he's taken advantage of anything chaotic ahead of him and scored points on two occasions so far in 2021 including a somewhat controversial podium finish with the team in Belgium after that joke of a race. He thoroughly deserves his opportunity with Mercedes, and I'm sure he'll grab his opportunity with both hands up against the most successful Formula 1 driver of all time in one of the most successful teams of all time. I think he's also very aware of the opportunity that he has to learn from Lewis Hamilton. Russell has of course had a trial run in the Mercedes already, when he subbed in for Hamilton at the Sakir Grand Prix in 2020. It was a great race where the British driver was robbed of a win after an uncharacteristic pit stop error for the Mercedes team, followed by a puncture which dropped him further back down the order. But he proved his worth, and this move was probably a done deal after that race weekend where he stepped up to the front of the grid with ease. I expect more of the same from Russell in 2022. The winners, Alex Albon. Alex Albon is my next winner in what is probably the move that I least expected from the driver transfers this season. The Red Bull back driver is on their long list of rejected juniors, but as I've said on this channel on a number of occasions before, Albon has never been given a real opportunity to grow and learn in Formula 1, as he was promoted from the Toro Rosso team after just 12 Grand Prix in 2019. This left him in a tough spot up against Max Verstappen in a Red Bull team that is wholly backing the Dutch driver. It was a tough time for Albon as he ended up having a double dose of bad luck after he was dropped from the Red Bull team right at the end of the 2020 season, leaving him with no options and no time to find a race seat for 2021. Even Pierre Gasly was given that opportunity to go back down to the now Alpha Tauri team, but Albon was never offered that chance despite being the least experienced driver to ever race in that Red Bull car. So it's only fair that Albon gets his opportunity to prove himself in 2022. Now I don't think many would have expected him to get a seat at Williams, but given his recent experience at the front of the Formula 1 grid, I think it's a sensible decision from Jos Capito and the team at Williams to sign Albon given their current situation. In the meantime, Albon has done well as the Red Bull test and reserve driver, he has supported the team and their drivers in the title race, which means he can offer valuable information for Williams. And alongside this, he's also competed in DTM, and has done well with the spotlight away from him for a year or so. So I expect Williams will be getting a driver full of confidence going into next year. For Albon, he gets another shot in the sport, which he'll grab with both hands as realistically it was now or never, with drivers very rarely returning after two years off the Formula 1 grid. But I think there's no denying that Albon's shown enough promise from his two years on the grid so far to deserve a chance to race in Formula 1 again. The winners, Red Bull. Which nicely leads me on to talk about the next winner on my list, which is Red Bull. In 2022, Red Bull will have five drivers on the grid with some form of backing, plus a further three drivers that were previously backed by the team. So that represents 40% of the Formula 1 grid having some form of association with Red Bull during their careers in Formula 1. That's a crazy statistic, and I think it's a testament as to how good they've been at bringing talent into the sport over the last decade or so. 
but this represents the first time in a long time that Red Bull have placed a driver at a team that isn't theirs. Yes, officially the driver has been released, but Albon and Red Bull have an option to bring the tyre driver back to the team should both parties want it. It's a huge move as it shows that the team has drivers in their ranks that are surplus to their Formula 1 requirements, but are still particularly attractive to other teams. It's especially a win for Red Bull, as they've found a seat for one of their drivers in a position that was previously occupied by a Mercedes young driver in George Russell. So they'll be especially thankful for their ties with Jos Capito when the German team principal was racing with Volkswagen in rally cars while sponsored by the Austrian energy drinks manufacturer. This loose tie to Capito probably aided in the discussions, and given the Williams team were wanting to prove themselves, it was a good move for both parties. It's a way in which Red Bull, and in particular Christian Horner, have got one up on Mercedes and Toto Wolff, which will be tough for the German team to take. So we've seen the winners, and for the most part they were fairly obvious. But what about the losers from all this? The losers. The Formula 2 grid. Starting off, I haven't picked a team or a driver, but instead a group of competitors. This year, Formula 2 has had quite possibly the worst schedule I've ever seen. Last year, this round of races at Monza represented the 8th weekend of events in a 12 round season. But this year, Monza represents the 5th round of an 8 round season. So by this stage in the year, Formula 2 drivers have completed just half of their seasons running. Not only this, but the category has seen a shake up in the weekend structure, with two sprint races as well as the feature race. And as a result, more fans are confused by the setup and the huge gaps between events which has resulted in a real challenge for the audience to understand what's going on and follow it over the course of the season. In addition, with the silly season happening through the summer each year, it remains uncertain as to which of these drivers will finish in those all-important top three positions. Currently in the standings, the gap between the leader and fifth position in Formula 2 is spread by just 23 points. And so at the time that these teams have been making decisions for their future, it wouldn't be certain as to who would be available for next year with enough points to qualify for a super license. At least with the previous Formula 2 championships, you had at least some idea of who was performing well, considering they completed more than half of their rounds across the season by the summer. So as a result, the Formula 2 grid, in particular those in title contention, are definitely losers from this year's silly season. The likes of Robert Schwarzman, who was heavily rumoured to be making a Formula 1 appearance this year, had seemed to be completely absent from any conversations this time around. And Oscar Piastri, who currently leads that championship, hasn't really had much of a look in anywhere. There is a potential opportunity for Guan Yu Zhou to go to Alfa Romeo for 2022, especially with the backing that he has. But with Teo Porsche likely to graduate into that seat before too long, anybody who gets a chance in that Alfa Romeo seat is likely to only be a stopgap solution. There is another element in all of this, which is the fact that the teams will want experienced drivers in their seats as we move into the new regulations for 2022. This is a critical element which can't be ignored, so perhaps that's a key factor in the Formula 2 drivers not really being a part of the conversation. But either way, I'd say this group has lost out at least in part because of the poor scheduling of the feeder series events this season. The losers, Pierre Gasly. The next loser I've picked is Pierre Gasly. Now I know I've gone on about this guy a lot in recent times, and the fact that he should be looking for an opportunity to leave the Red Balloon seats, but I'm adamant that he will not reach his potential if he's stuck in an Alfa Tauri car. Right now, his stock in the sport is really high, and I'm sure if given the opportunity, most teams would want the Frenchman. But he's watched Alex Albon be given the chance to go elsewhere, whilst keeping his Red Bull options open for the future. Meanwhile, Gasly's set to race for Alfa Tauri once again for 2022. Perhaps the Red Bull sister team has changed and they are no longer a proven gown for the team's junior drivers, instead being an independent team. But it feels to me as though Gasly's being kept until a better option comes along. Dennis Hauger is currently a runaway leader in the Formula 3 Championship and is a member of the Red Bull Junior team. If he was to do well in Formula 2 next season, I can't see Helmut Marco stopping him from getting the opportunity he would deserve to step up into an Alpha Tauri car. Sure, they could drop Yuki Tsunoda, but if Tsunoda improves next year, would it be worth keeping the youthful drivers there? If there is any doubt at all, I would want to see Gasly flourish elsewhere, preferably at a manufacturer team which will value his talents at their team. So surely, watching your fellow Red Bull driver go to Williams when he stayed put for another year would be a tough one to take. 
I think Gasly might have wanted the Williams seat himself and see Albon head back into the Alpha Tauri, especially having seen the success that Carlos Sainz has had ever since he went on a similar kind of loan move to Renault in 2018. This one was a bit speculative, but let me know your thoughts on Gasly's position in the comments. The losers, Toto Wolff. The final loser of this video has got to be Toto Wolff. The Mercedes CEO has well and truly lost out from the situation I explored earlier on. Williams has been a great place for George Russell to prove his ability and then graduate up into the works team. There's no doubt that the Mercedes setup will be looking for another driver to go through a similar process and potentially be a long-term Lewis Hamilton replacement once the world champion retires from the sport. It's crucial that even if George Russell steps up into the number one driver role, the Mercedes have a strong number two driver to support him to win the Constructors' Championship. It's a role that Valtteri Bottas has done well for a few seasons. It seemed like this silly season, Nick De Vries was the driver of choice. The Mercedes Formula E driver who's won the championship earlier this year. He's a talented, young driver who's a Formula 2 champion and has never been given an opportunity in the sport. He's a rumoured option for the Alfa Romeo seat, much like Guan Yu Zhou is, so this is potentially not over yet. But for Toto Wolff, it'll be a real shame to have a Red Bull back driver sitting in that Williams seat over a driver that he would have wanted. During media interviews at Zandvoort, Wolff also commented that he wouldn't want Albon in that seat with Red Bull backing, given the team operate with the Mercedes power unit. But it seems like, on this occasion, he's lost out, and Albon has joined the team still with some form of Red Bull links. It'll be a tough one for Wolf to take, given he may be left in a situation where he doesn't have many options looking ahead for his future Formula 1 drivers. But things can change in Formula 1 at a rapid pace, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one wasn't over just yet. So those are my winners and losers for the 2021 silly season. Let me know your winners and losers in the comments, and thanks for watching.